Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ivy Corvus. I am a witch, a psychic, a chaos magician. I prescribe to chaos magic theory. I do a lot of really witchy and spiritual things in the occult community, and I thought it would be fun to just sit down with you and talk about the spirits that I'm gonna be working with this next year, because I love working with spirits. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. This year is gonna be really interesting because I am working with some spirits that are just brand new to me. So grab your tea, let's chat. I also wanted to say that I work with different spirits depending on the time of the year as well. So springtime I work with different spirits than I do in the summer and fall. I'm gonna have timestamps on this video and I'll have this video broken up into seasons because the energy of the season very much dictates which energetic entities it is that I'm gonna be working with. I also want to say I'm not gonna talk about every single spirit that I'm working with this year. This is kind of just like a general overview. There are some spiritual entities that I work with that really don't want me to talk about them on a YouTube video. For example, all my work with Phil both is very private and at this point I am not able to share what's going on with my work with him. Another example is the draconic energy that I work with. That is something else that I am not able to share in a video at this time. And a couple other spirits that I can't even mention their name on a video. It's just in our pact with each other that work is for us and not for the general public. So there are going to be some spirits that are left out of this video that I am working with. But the rest of this video is going to be about experiments with new spirits. So it is currently spring here in the northern hemisphere and that means it is time to do my gnome ritual again so for those that have been on my channel last year I started working with gnomes for the very first time for the longest time I was never really drawn to any sort of fae creature I don't know it just wasn't really calling out to me like I never had a desire to work with fairies or really anything else in the fae realm I personally consider gnomes as part of the fae I feel like fae is like a giant umbrella and then you have all of these entities underneath gnomes being one of them and then there's also like fairies and brownies and you know a bunch of other things that I would personally consider Faye, and I don't claim to be an expert by any means, but I just never really had a desire to work with them at any point until last year I decided, you know what, I kind of want to work with gnomes just for fun, just to see what happens, and I'm not going to share my entire story in this video because I've already done that in a previous video, but oh my gosh, my experience with the gnomes was so paranormal so paranormal so palpable there were actual results that I got from the ritual I did so anyways if you're interested in my whole gnome story from last year I'll link a video down below it was a video I did during Yule time I was kind of reflecting on the entire past year and there's a timestamp dedicated just to gnomes in that video so I'll link the video down below for the gnome story and then you can just fast forward to the timestamp that specifically says gnomes so this year I'm excited because I picked up a couple things from the store and I really wanted to incorporate them into my ritual. I got so many questions from people asking me how I invoked or evoked the gnomes and what exact ritual I did. I don't know. I don't know what I did. You want to know what I did? I went out to my garden. I put on some fairy-like music. I brought an offering, so I brought a little baked good, and then I continued to leave offerings throughout all of last year. But during my ritual, all I did was put on fairy music, and I danced around. I sang. I was completely led by spirit and just did whatever I felt was good in the moment. And then I said a little prayer at the end, and I said, gnomes, if you would like to come into this space, you are invited to be here to share my garden with me, protect this garden, grow things with me etc and yeah I didn't really do anything formal so but this year I went to the store and if you saw my video um, the vision board witchcraft video you've seen this already but it says it's grow time which I thought was so cute but look at this little gnome so this I'm going to put in the center of the ritual this year and I'm gonna kind of make it a talisman for the gnomes and then I went to the dollar store and I also found all of these little tiny gnome huts. There's so many of them. If you're on my Instagram, you've already seen these because I got these, I think a month or two ago, um, and they've just been sitting inside because I didn't want them to get super rained on, but look how cute <laughs> some of these are. So yeah, I just got a bunch of these from the dollar store and I have a stump out back. I have this magical stump as I call it, and it's where I leave offerings. It's just a stump that kind of goes past my garden beds and it's hollow so I can put stuff inside it. So I'll put my offerings in there, I'll leave a couple shiny things in there, I'll put my little miniature houses around it, and then I'll add my big gnome as the talisman for the ritual. Hey everyone, it's Editing Ivy here. I just received this sweetest little care package from Sophie, the Midwest magician. Um, she's an absolute sweetheart. I'll link her channel in the description box, but she sent me this cute little care package and it had a little 
little gnome thing in it. I, I can't show it to you on camera because it's already out in my garden, but I just, after reviewing the footage of this video, I totally forgot to show that off before I already put it in the garden, but I have this little cute little gnome situation from Sophie. So I just want to say thank you, Sophie. You're the sweetest. So yeah, no plan at this time. I'm literally just going to go out to my garden beds, put on fairy music, dance around, leave offerings, decorate with gnome stuff <laughs> and see what happens. And then for the rest of springtime, I kind of just work with any spirits that want to come in. You know, if there's some spirits that come in to my house, which my house is always open for benevolent spirits, spirits that are not going to cause harm, that are not tricksters. I don't invite that kind of energy into my home, but anybody that wants to pop in and say hi, I'm willing to say hi. Also, I feel like I should have probably started this video out with my perspective on spirits. And I'm not really going to deep dive into that in this video because that's like a whole nother rant. But if you had asked me like 10 years ago, if I believed in fairies or gnomes or dragons or whatever, I would have said no you're insane because that's not real. But here's the thing with chaos magic theory, whether things are objectively real or not, it doesn't really matter. I have a whole playlist of chaos magic videos on my channel. If you have not watched those, feel free to go ahead and do so. I'll even link the one, it's like chaos magic and pop culture, where you're using fictional characters from TV shows, movies, books, you're using inspiration from video games, etc. It doesn't really matter if these things are objectively real or not, as long as they're actually giving you results, as long as they're creating change in your reality. I personally don't believe, and this is also very much part of chaos magic theory, I don't believe that we can experience reality objectively because our experience as humans is entirely subjective, whether it's through cultural biases, through your personal experiences, even the five physical senses are a very subjective experience per person. We are constantly receiving all of this stimulus and all of these messages from our external environment that our brains are filtering out if they don't match up to a reality threshold. So again, I'm not really going to go through like this whole long rant about it, but I don't personally think that we can experience reality objectively and we are really purely experiencing everything through a subjective lens. And because of that, because we are experiencing reality through a subjective lens, we cannot claim that there is any sort of objective reality. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but we can't claim that because of our subjective perspective. And because of that, because nothing is true, you know what I'm going to say next, everything is permitted. If we can't claim that something is inherently true or not true, then all possibilities exist for us to explore. And if we were to just open our minds and experiment and see what happens, life is too short to be closed-minded. I also work with these magical entities as, uh, and I've said this many before in other videos, but I always get this question, so I feel like I need to put it in this video. I work with a lot of like spirits and magical entities from the perspective of egregores. So egregores are magical entities that are created kind of by the thoughts and emotions of a collective group of people. So let's take Bigfoot, for example, which we totally are going to talk about Bigfoot in a second. Do I believe that Bigfoot is objectively real? Probably not because I can't claim that anything's real or not real, but I can say that Bigfoot could at least be an egregore because it is this idea, it is this entity that so many people over time and space have fed their energy and their intention into believing or maybe even not believing and just talking about Bigfoot. So whether Bigfoot is real is irrelevant because I can work with Bigfoot from an egregore sense and work with that channeled energy that the entire collective has really created around this figure. I personally really love Carl Jung, and now I'm really going on a rant, um, but his whole theory about the collective unconsciousness and all of these stored images and memories and thoughts and emotions of the entire human race. And it's really cool when you think about that and being able to tap into certain archetypal energies. So you can even think of Bigfoot or the flying spaghetti monster or whatever it happens to be as an archetypal energy that you can tap into or even a fictional character from your favorite book. So many readers have put their energy and their intention into this fantasy world where this character is actually real and they've tied their real emotions to this character in a book. So that's also a very valid way of practicing. And so yes, as a psychic, I do work with spirits of the dead. I do work with ancestors and spirits that are haunting some places because they either didn't pass on correctly or there were some sort of energetic echo left. This conversation is so vast, but I just wanted to include a little bit of my chaos magic theory into a video like this, especially before I go into summer magic. Uh, there are so many entities I'm working with this 
this year. So this summer I have a plan. So anyways, to wrap up spring, I'll mainly be working with the gnomes and really any sort of house spirits that kind of want to filter in. When summer hits, that is where I really love connecting to the land, working with tree spirits, working with other land spirits. So there's this forest I've talked about like really, really briefly in a couple other videos of mine, but there's this forest um, a little bit, it's maybe like a 15 minute drive from my house, but it's gorgeous and it just goes for miles and miles and it's totally untouched, which is not known here because where I live, it's kind of like the suburbs and it's really hard to find a pocket of forest. So anyways, uh, driving out to this forest, Every time I go, I'm trying to develop an active relationship with it. And so every time I go, I try to meditate with a different tree to establish a connection with the forest. And recently I took my cousin, who also happens to be one of my besties, out to the forest and um, her and I sat underneath the tree and meditated together. So what I usually do with the trees is I'll sit at the base of the tree and then I'll kind of go into a, a light meditation. You know, I'll count backwards from 10 or count my breaths, do a body scan, etc. And once I'm really, really relaxed and I feel myself kind of hitting that flow state, I visualize myself almost leaving my body and walking around the backside of a tree. And then on the backside of the tree, there is a door. And every tree looks a little bit different. Like some will have long, tall, skinny doors. Some will have really tiny looking fairy hut doors. So it really just kind of depends on the tree. But I'll go back and visualize a door on the tree. And then I open the door, I walk inside the tree, and then I just see what happens. I see what sort of energy fills my body. I see if there's any colors present or if I receive any messages are there any other visuals etc and it's so interesting to do this with different types of trees even the same species but just different trees in a grove and how you can get different meditations out of it so anyways I went with my cousin I brought her and we did a little meditation it was completely unguided so her and I did not do a guided meditation together by any means she sat next to the tree and I sat next to the tree with our backs against the trunk and we just went silent and decided to do our own separate meditations and when we came out of the meditation it was so cool because we compared experiences and we got the exact same energy from the tree the exact same energy it was so interesting so to elaborate on that a little bit more I had gotten a bright neon yellow light when I entered the tree and it was almost like a party disco like it was very excited and vibrant and jovial and kind of fun and jokey and just a very fun eccentric excited vibe is what I got from the tree and then she actually had a conversation conversation with the tree where the tree was just really like joking and sarcastic and it was just this really light party vibe that we both had got from the same tree. But then in comparison, I've done meditations with other trees in the forest and another tree, for example, was very much blue energy. It was very soft and quiet, but not weak, but more stern. And it was also very studious. That was the energy that I got from that particular tree when I did that meditation. So I definitely encourage you to go out to a forest, meditate with different trees, see if you can pick up on some spiritual energy with that tree. And sometimes you can even get messages from the trees as well. So I definitely recommend doing that. So that is the first thing that I'll be doing this summer is meditating with different trees, really continuing to build that relationship with the forest and any other land spirits, you know, that may wanna come forth during a meditation. In addition to that, um, this is really gonna be the first year that I have ever worked with cryptids. So I'm really, really excited for this. So if you're not aware, a cryptid is basically a creature that has been found in stories and people sometimes believe they're real, sometimes not, but it's never really been proven whether they're real or not. So like Bigfoot or Sasquatch would be a really good example of a cryptid. And there are cryptids all over the world. I think there's even books, like there's this one book in particular, one of my channel members had dropped in our Discord server of the cryptids across North America or at least across the United States or something like that. I live in Washington state and Bigfoot is a really big deal here. Like, especially if you go over to the peninsula, a lot of people don't realize that we have a rainforest in Washington state, but we do. And if you go over to the rainforest on the peninsula, there's a lot of really small towns that surround the rainforest. And there's like Bigfoot memorabilia, memorabilia, is that the right word? I don't know. There's like swag for Bigfoot <laughs> in all of it. It's a very like touristy thing, right? So Bigfoot or Sasquatch is a really big thing over there, but also Bat Squatch. Bat Squatch is another cryptid 
that's really popular and well not as popular in Washington state a lot of Washingtonians probably haven't even heard of bat squatch but apparently there have been sightings of bat squatch in this area as well so from my chaos magic perspective I really really want to work with Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Bat Squatch, something like that. So I think in that forest that I have a relation, a working relationship with, I think I'm going to call upon the energies of Sasquatch and see what happens because I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Whether, Like I said previously, whether the entity is real or not, it doesn't really matter because I can tap into that archetypal energy for ritual. So I'm going to try to invoke that energy into my being and maybe, maybe I'll even try an evocation just to see what happens. But I'm really excited to work with these more, I don't know, mythological creatures or whatever. I don't really know what I'm going to do for my ritual yet. Usually my rituals are super, I mean, hello, chaos magician. They're super abstract and creative and on the fly. Bat Squatch, for example, Example. Let me read this. The Bat Squatch is a flying cryptid that was allegedly seen near Mount St. Helens in the 1980s. It resembles a flying primate. A witness allegedly took pictures of this creature. However, these pictures have not yet been analyzed, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, Bat Squatch looks hardcore. How cool would it be to go to Mount St. Helens? Even though I lived in Washington my whole life and I, I have traveled outside of Washington, okay? I <laughs> try to culture myself as much as possible, but I've never been to Mount St. Helens, which is so funny because it's such a big, like Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, those are some really big attractions and gorgeous hikes, just gorgeous mountains to go see. And I just haven't done it. So this summer, it would be really cool to do a road trip. I think there's actually some Native American myths legends and lore around Mount St. Helens as well. I could be wrong with that, but this summer I have decided that I am going to dedicate myself to learning about the cryptids of my area because even if I don't want to work with like Bat Squatch and Sasquatch and be silly and ridiculous when it comes to that, it's still really cool to learn about the mythology, the lore of the area that you currently live in because I personally feel that it shapes culture. Our stories shape the culture that we live in and connecting to the land means connecting to the stories. As witchy people, we always talk about, you know, attempting to connect to the land uh, of our ancestors or just working ancestral magic in general. But I think just learning the stories of all the different cultures that have lived in this area is really important as well to give reverence and respect and to see what this land has gone through over a long period of time. So anyways, that's going to be my work with cryptids this year. I'll keep you posted. I don't know. I probably won't make a video about it. Who knows? Maybe I will. I'll probably just update you all on Instagram. I like to do a little quick updates for what I'm doing on Instagram because it's just like so much easier than sitting down and filming a whole video about maybe a two second thing that I did, you know? Who knows? I could go out to the forest and try to invoke that energy into my being or evoke bat squatch and nothing happens. <laughs> I don't know. But it's all about experimentation. It's all about being a mad scientist and just seeing what happens. Also, if you're noticing that my skin is like extra shiny today, it's because I did a whole skincare routine and it's looking all like fresh, fresh baby face. So moving into the fall, moving into autumn time, I always work with my ancestors um, in the fall. And I've done a couple videos, some ancestral magic, you know, dedication videos in the past. I've talked about how I do an ancestral dedication ceremony every year around October, just to kind of rededicate myself and honestly just reground myself back to who I am, what I'm doing here on this earth, the work that I'm doing for my ancestors, etc. But I've been really feeling called to work with very specific ancestors. Uh, so beforehand with my ancestral magic, I typically work with my entire ancestral lineage. I open it up to anybody that wants to show up during ritual, as long as they're in alignment with what my highest will wants, my greatest good, all of that stuff. We also have a lot of like really toxic, alcoholic, abusive people in my family history. So I don't want those people showing up. <laughs> I only want the people that are really kind of in alignment with what I'm wanting for myself. So yeah, in the past, I've kind of worked with my entire ancestral line and I haven't really dove too specifically into working with, well, that's not true. I have worked with grandparents before that have passed on. Those would be very, you know, specific ancestors, but I'm kind of wanting to open myself up to working with ancestors that are further back, not just grandparents or great grandparents, but further back in my lineage. My dad is really, really passionate about our ancestry. And so he has traced us back all the way through the male line. I don't have any records on my mother's line because I haven't done any of that work yet. For reference, my, my parents aren't together. So it's not like he's just blatantly ignoring my mother. Anyways, why am I disclosing this on a video? It doesn't matter. My parents are not together. So my dad really was passionate about his ancestry and um, in his line. So everything that I know of is through the, the male line. And we are related to Sir Isaac Newton. And I 
have been wanting to work with Sir Isaac Newton for a really long time, particularly because A, I think he's a genius. B, he's weird. Uh, he's very, like if you read anything about him, he never got married, but also he was like this incredibly brilliant mind, but also maybe a little egotistical and he might've been a jerk. I don't really know, <laughs> but I was first drawn to working with him because of our similarities with science and working on my science degree and being just really interested in, in science in general and discoveries and innovation. I feel like I am a, a very, very innovative person that's one thing I do have going for me. You know, we all have our flaws and whatnot, but one thing I do really love about myself is that I am a very, very innovative person, that's for sure. So I kind of wanted to work with him for that and just invoking him into ritual when I'm working on mad scientist things. He was also an alchemist. So a lot of people in the mainstream world only know Sir Isaac Newton as a scientist and his famous contributions, but a lot of people don't know that he was also an alchemist, which I did a whole video on alchemy if you're interested in learning about alchemy from an occultist perspective because there's so much more than just the scientific aspect of alchemy. There's also this uh, spiritual transformation element. Carl Jung had also introduced this psychological transformation element. Anyways, I think alchemy is fascinating. So he was very much a mad scientist magician to me in all ways. Whether he's a jerk or not, I don't really know. Or maybe was he just egotistical? I'm not sure. I'm interested to find out how my experience goes with him because I am his ancestor. So will he be nice to me or will he be rude to me? Did he even like women? I'm not sure if he did like women or not. <laughs> I know that he was potentially obsessed with purity culture though. Uh, so maybe it wasn't the fact that he didn't like women, but more so about purity, which you know what, now that I'm thinking about it as I'm filming this, that kind of makes sense with alchemy because with this um, spiritual transformation, you're really trying to achieve your most pure state. So maybe he was just so hardcore into alchemy that that's why he decided to be celibate and not get married married and he potentially died a virgin. By the way, I know that sounds confusing. It's like, how is he your ancestor if he died a virgin? He's my cousin. He is my cousin generations back directly through the male line, if that makes sense. So maybe he was interested in the purity aspect of that from a spiritual perspective, you know, an alchemical perspective. I will admit I haven't done a ton of research on him. So if anybody's familiar with Sir Isaac Newton, please feel free to put your own comments down below because I would love to read about him. But yeah, I've just decided this um, this fall that I'm really gonna connect to very specific ancestors. I might even set up a little altar to him I don't really know what I'm gonna put on the altar yet. I'll keep you all updated. We'll see how it goes. I decided to fact check myself real quick. So some have characterized Newton as a devotee of this alchemical path to scientific knowledge and his commitment to that involved purity of the heart to the extent that he died a virgin. So he was that committed to his alchemical transformation and that obsessed with purity that he did not engage in any sort of sexual affairs. So maybe it isn't that he hates women. Maybe it's simply about the, the purity aspect. Although others have viewed him as a rather mean-spirited character and apparently he got into some ugly exchanges with people, I don't know, and then other people have claimed that he's extremely egotistical. But like if you're a genius, I kind of get it. I kind of get why you might be a little egotistical. <laughs> everybody has those days, you know, everybody has those days where you just look around and you're like, I'm smarter than everyone. Uh, this is stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyways, as the ultimate alchemist in my opinion and scientific genius, um, I'm just, I'm excited to see what my work with him entails. I'm going to try to bring him into all occult rituals that really align with spiritual purity enhancing my knowledge, anything that requires curiosity or innovation. I might even bring him in for, you know, like I was saying earlier, my scientific degree really focusing on hopefully graduating by the end of this year because, oh my God, I'm exhausted and I'm hoping that I get to graduate by the end of the year. Really, it depends on when certain classes are being offered, by the way, because I'm now at the end of this next section of schooling and all of my classes are very, like, highly specialized. And if there's not enough students that register for these highly specialized classes, then they don't get offered. And then I just have to wait until those classes are offered again, which is so frustrating. That's kind of why my graduation has been so delayed. But anyways, if I could get his advice or guidance or anything like that, so should be interesting, should be really interesting. So that's autumn. And I'm not really gonna have a section for winter because winter is a time that I try my best to go into hibernation and rest mode. And I try not to actively really do anything at all. I always end up doing something though, because I'm a busybody. but I really try my best to just not do anything. If there are house spirits that want to engage, you know, some somebody's passing through at the time, I will totally engage. But otherwise, wintertime, I just kind of shut off, rest, reset, all of those things. 
I would love to hear who everyone else is going to be working with this next year. Feel free to do a VR, a video reaction to this. If you are a fellow YouTuber and you want to share the spirits that you are working with this year and also what you're doing, what do your rituals look like? What's your inspiration? Like, what are you using these spirits for? Let's get a conversation going about it because I think that's so fun. Again, I wish I could share all the spirits that I'm working with in this video, but some of the most profound experiences I've had, I just, I cannot share them with you. And it's so frustrating because I want to, but I can't. Maybe someday. Who knows? Thanks for having tea with me. I will see you all again soon. Bye everyone.